Welcome back, all my 40K fanatics out there. I'm DJ here with Tim's Nation to bring you my list that will be taking on Lane and the returning Votan. That's right. Lane has been working very diligently on a bunch of models to improve his Votan and Votan collection. And today he will be debuting a whole, whole slew of new models. I've seen the list and man, he's got some man hours in on what he's been doing here. All right, guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. Turn on the bell to get notified on all the content we bring you here on the channel. Lots of new stuff that we've been working on. Um, some of the stuff that I've been doing with the table talks where we're talking about some in-depth battle, uh, battle scenarios and kind of how to practice during your own schedule and stuff like that and things to look at and stuff like that, uh, as well as our tournament that we're going to be doing here very, very soon. And we've been talking about some sort of Thanksgiving, maybe... Uh, getting a theme thematic game around the holidays and then closing out the year with the tournament. So that's kind of what's on the, on the horizon. And also what's on the horizon is the Necrons that I will be bringing today. Because not only will it be a return of the Votan and Lane's Votan, but we will also be bringing back the Destroyer Cult. Fans of the channel know that I went through a whole set of videos where I talked about all the different Destroyer units, went through them all, how they function, what they could do. And then I just slapped together a destroyer cult army. Nothing but destroyers, one Canoptic Reanimator, and everything else destroyers. So we played this going into dreadnoughts and vehicles and all of that. And to, to most of you, it was going to be a rough matchup that the vehicles were going to bear too much, etc., etc., etc. And after that battle, the destroyer cult performed way above my own expectations that both Lane and myself have agreed, this ushered in this list getting a second chance and a try more competitively. Since Lane's also testing out some competitive lists himself, I felt like it was a good opportunity to get these two new hybrid kind of concepts and designs for these lists on the table. Lane's infantry-based Votan, which is kind of the popular way that they're played uh, now, but he's got his own spin on it and mix on it. And Destroyer Cult, the units that no one's talking about, with my cult of no personality, as I call it. Because, again, robots and lacking person. It's funny. I'm a dad. I'm allowed. Anyways, so I did a video once before talking about this list. So now I'm going to go through it much quicker, flash everything that I'm working with, and then talk about what my thoughts are in going into this matchup, since this is the second time I will be bringing this on the channel, and I'm putting a lot of thought into this potentially being a diamond in the rough of lists during late index edition of the Necrons. All right, let's take a look. All right, so here you go. Here is the Destroyer Cult. Now, these pictures are from the last time that I took these because I have some of the models upstairs and I'm trying to get some of them painted before the actual matchup so we can get some more flash on some models beforehand. So forgive me for that. Also, thank you guys for all the support that has helped us because we are going to be redesigning the photography area here soon. So we'll be able to get better, stronger pictures of all of our models, mostly mine, here very, very soon. With that being said, Destroyer Cult, Cult of No Personality. Here we go. So first and foremost, we have our score pack Destroyers. I have two, three squads of these guys. One squad is a three-man. I'm sorry, one squad is a six-man, and the other two are three-mans. They will all have a Locust, I'm sorry, Score Pack Lord. Let's get these destroyers right. They will all have a Score Pack Lord leading them. What these guys turn into is kind of a bodyguard for that Score Pack Lord. This is quick bodies. They have a 7-inch move, but they are infantry, so they can move through ruins, etc., and things like that. People are down on kind of how hard they hit. I personally still like them, and I've seen them actually hit relatively well, especially with that Score Pack Lord attached. At 100 points apiece, 200 for the six man, and then 100 points for a score pack lord for how much of a massive tank those guys are. This is definitely, it's definitely some value behind it for relatively cheap. The score pack lords themselves are very, very tough and can make things happen. Go over to them. We do have three score pack lords. They will all be attached to a unit as a vessel. Yes, I could easily deploy these guys separately. They are tough enough to handle being deployed separately, but I like the escort of the unit. The unit dies. The character usually still is alive. Uh, one of my Scorpac Lords, 
Thanos, as we call him, is going to be equipped with the Centripetal Weave. So he will have a 4-up Feel No Pain because he's the toughest target to take it. And honestly, I know we usually go over to Transcendence uh, for that or maybe a Catacomb Command Barge. But man, a character like him with a 4-up Feel No Pain is just so, so nasty, especially for how cheap it is. All right, on to uh, some of the other damage dealers. We have a six-man squad of the Locust Destroyers. Uh, I liked these guys a lot in my previous battle as I was able to kind of string them out and cover a couple different flanks. While they don't have a lot of guns, they provide enough guns to finish and clean up and safety. Um, as to, on top of it, they will be led by a Locust Lord. Got it right this time. And he will have the Sovereign. So he's able to kind of float around the outside of the unit and be wherever he needs to be to be able to give that buff to some of the other backfield units. While my score packs have a character leading them, so they're getting the character buffs in inherently, the units like my segue to Locust Heavy Destroyers do not typically have a character with them. While one of the three-man squads does, the two with Gauze Destructors do not. And since the two with Gauze Destructors do not, I would like to be able to give them the plus one buff pretty easily. And that means that their role is usually hanging out by the Locust to get the bonuses. While the other squad, with the Eradicators, they have a Locust Lord themselves with a Veil, so they can Deep Strike, drop in, and get really close and do a lot of damage. So they're, they're getting the character protection and character buff inherently by themselves. So this gives me a really, with the Locust, gives me a lot of good coverage to make sure I'm going to be hitting on plus ones, or hitting with plus one pretty much the entire game with most of my units that I, I want that for. Uh, so we do have some stuff for objectives as well. Uh, we have a squad of two Locust Destroyers. So I know a lot of people like to run these as singles. I, as well, like to run the single. 30-point model, toughness, higher toughness, good amount of wounds, just annoying enough that your opponent has to actually do something to get rid of it. So why not make it a squad of two? Uh, I have the Ophidians in here, which are next to come. I have the Hexmark, which is next to come. So I do have some different units that are able to do secondaries and play into secondaries very well. That having this as a two, having this as two Locust Destroyers makes it just that little bit harder and makes you actually have to put something realistic into it. Otherwise, you kill one and it just comes back. These guys are good for being the extra unit for engage on all fronts, behind enemy lines, or any other actions, because I usually keep them in strategic reserve, that I need later into the game to mean, make it so I don't have to sacrifice or dedicate an Ophidian to a death zone where they could just die. And that'll get us over into the Ophidian Destroyers. So the Ophidian Destroyers are simple. They pick up off the table and they go any, at the end of my opponent's turn, and I can put them anywhere on the table nine inches away in my reinforcement set. These guys are secondary machines. That's what they do. And there's a lot of ways that they've been picking up secondaries for days. Uh, just the last game, I was able to get a charge with them. That I stuck a nine-inch charge with one of them, which was enough to steal my opponent's home outpost for secure enemy outpost. So there is a lot of play with these guys. They're great, very quick. Very fragile. They're not the toughest unit in the in the army, but they what they lack in toughness they make in speed. With the twelve inch move as well as the deep strike ability, they're very 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 nice. Uh, I, I love them, and they're in so many lists even outside of this one. And then we also talk about the Hexmark Destroyer. The Hexmark Destroyer doesn't have as much of a home in this list initially. And when I put him in here, I thought it was just for the fluff of having every destroyer unit in here and including one of him. However, as I soon learned later on, he becomes a third tier of type of secondary unit that I have in this army that I wasn't originally anticipating. And that's with his small singular base size. He makes it very difficult for opponent to completely zone me out. Being able to drop him in in the backfield means I can get easy points on behind enemy lines or a... Uh, dis or deploy teleport homers, I believe, in my opponent's deployment zone, things like that, that having this small base, it's very hard to stop him. So the hex mark still hangs around. Uh, in this matchup going into Votan, 
he actually may have a stronger play because his pistols do really well into a lot of Votan units. And last is the non Canoptic or non destroyer unit, the Canoptic Reanimator. There's nothing to be said about this guy that hasn't already been said before. And being able to roll an additional D3 for three wound models is going to be really effective to keep me putting at least one model back every single turn in every single unit. Uh, on top, combined with that, with the reanimation strat, this thing is able to easily make my locust heavies almost impossible to move, provide enough support for the score packs to try to keep them up in a very, very, in a meta that has weapons that can pick up the six man, as well as protecting the locust in the same fashion. The Canoptic Reanimator is a never leave home without it, and I would be completely handicapping myself if I didn't take it in this list. So as I said, I would be completely handicapping myself without the Reanimator. And with that being said, initially, my the concept for this list, I thought I was handicapping myself with the Destroyer Cult and just going into entirely Cult. However, one of the things that I noticed after playing the list and then looking into it deeper is the amount of units I'm able to put on the board for relatively cheap that points are not being dedicated into other Necron stuff that we would usually take, makes for a very, very sizable army. Uh, in matchups where opponent has a lot of anti-infantry, things like the Locust and Locust Heavy kind of mess with that a bit because they're not infantry. Uh, so there's, it's weird on how some of those rule interactions actually make this army more durable than you would think initially. So, and on top of that, I have access to multiple ways to play secondaries, as mentioned with the Ophidians, the Hex Marks, and um, uh, the Locust, two-man Locust Squad. With that being said, I was playing into Lane's list that was just for fun, a bunch of dreads. So, uh, I'm definitely very, very interested to see when we start putting armies down the try. I've called a lot of people and said, hey, I got this list you need to play against because I need someone to beat me up with this. And tell you, no, DJ, that's not going to work. So I put it back on the shelf and stop trying. Because right now, man, I'm getting, I'm getting confident with this list. I'm like, hey, I'm on to something here, man. Destroyers, baby. Um, with that being said, how I plan on trying to play this into Lane's Botan, he is very, very infantry heavy. And I'll try and not spoil anything with this. But um, my Locust heavies kind of run into a place where they're not going to be as useful uh, the gauze is not going to be as useful as their targets are going to be very limited. So my locust heavies in that position are going to be more sacrificial to trying to zone out deep strike and things like that. His combat is very, very soft. He doesn't have a lot of, um, other than some characters and the, the, the hearth, uh, hearth guard. Yeah, I believe it is the hearth, hearth guard warriors, the mini terminators. Um, he has some combat, but not as strong as what my score packs can bring in that sense. Uh, at that opposite, he's not planning on needing that. His plan is going to be to remove all of the things like the score packs. So it and get me into a gun battle where he can overwhelm me versus things like my locusts and locust heavies. So that's going to, so for me, that's going to mean that I need to try to get score packs into his ranks as quickly as possible. Now, I will be able to use the terrain a bit to my advantage to move these guys since they are infantry. Uh, I will probably be putting the score packs front and center. I know there's, with how big the squad is, it's going to be impossible for me to hide. And if I go first, getting that thing down the center objective might be crucial for playing the rest of the game. As well as the fact having, if, he, if I go second and he shoots at me and kills models, I can attempt to reanimate a little bit forward to bring extra range to get them on the center and hopefully protect out some other units. It's going to be a rough scenario if he goes first and is able to obliterate the Scorpac destroyers. Now, I will be able to gain some cover, and I could probably reanimate in a position to put me back behind a wall. I might play on some of that with some line of sight games. So it's like, okay, after one unit hits me hard, that's it. No one else can see me. And that's a very, very strong possibility. I could try and play off on that, where it's like only one or two models is actually able to be seen to progress forward and then pull back. Um, Ophidians are going to do Ophidian things, staying on the table, wait, pop up, and go score secondaries. In this matchup, though, the Ophidian charge could be threatening. 
Uh, there is some infantry that would not like to be in combat with these guys. And on top of it, we do have the Locust Exterminators, which are probably going to be target number one for <clears throat> a lot of his army. I know Lane's got some bikes. They're going to be scouting and able to cover the field very well. Um, they didn't like my hex mark too much. So hopefully we can get the hex mark in a position to pick on those bikes and do some damage back to them. Uh, the, when the bikes start weaning in size, they really wean in power fast. So my hope is that even if I can't take them out, I can damage them enough where they become irrelevant to some of my other tougher targets. Needless to say, this is a combat build. This is a 50-50 build. I have guns. I have combat. But each of my build, portions of my build, function very independently from one another while still being able to maintain a heavy hammer onto the secondary game. Can I push through Lane's army? Can I make it through the, the gun lines and the abilities and the buffs of the amounts of infantry that he has to be able to push in and shut down his shooting long enough to answer some of his most devastating guns that can really affect my list? Or will the Votan shooting and range and the amount of time and space between the two of us prove to be too much for the score pack list that lacks involves? And although size is still not a massive horde of an army, it's going to be definitely interesting to see a lot of we're going to learn a lot from this game and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So guys, we'll catch you over on the battle report. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.